guys! Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing um, our skirt sloper. So this is our first real pattern. Not the pillow wasn't a real pattern. Yes, it was. But uh, this is our first fashion pattern. Um, and before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about um, measurements and what slopers are. So we're going to be doing the skirt sloper. Um, so just so you know, all of these documents, I'm just going to sort of click through them, um, are, have been uploaded to Blackboard, so you can find them there. They're also found in your textbook. Um, so whichever you want to do to get them and follow along, uh, go for it. So um, this is the skirt draft. These are basically step-by-step -step what we're going to be doing. Um, I've done some notes in here, so I couldn't get a, a cleaner copy, but just ignore all of my notes. Just go by the uh, textbook instruction. So little things like here, so just don't do the drop one eighth. That was a little note I did for a custom one, but um, just follow along the actual text, ignore, <laughs> ignore my little notes. Um, and we're going to be creating this skirt sloper, um, and we're going to be doing it based off of a size 8 measurements. So you will need this chart. Again, it's up on Blackboard in the handout section of course content, so find it there. And um, it's also found in your book, so you can find it there as well. But don't be confused because there's a lot of different measurement charts in your book. This is just the standard one. Uh, so the book comes furnished with, you know, child measurement charts, um, male measurement charts, plus size, you know, all sorts of different kinds of measurement charts, which is one of the really great things about the book is there's just so much information in it. Um, and we're going to be working with a size 8. So we're going to be looking at these measurements, and for the most part, we'll be able to sort of look at them and um, use them, plug them in uh, wherever need be on our um, uh, skirt draft uh, directions. But um, instead of just plugging numbers in, I want to kind of just go over what the measurements are um, and when they are necessary. So I'm going to be flipping back and forth um, from this handout, which is a measurement guide. So actually, let's zoom out a little bit. See it a little bit better. And it goes over, you know, the main points of measurements. So here we can see a lot of our main points. Now we're not going to be working with the upper half uh, since we're doing the skirt, so we're just going to be looking at the lower half. So I want to look at the measurement points down here. Now it doesn't seem that they have too many down here, but um, I'm going to sort of just take a look at them. We do have this sort of waist here, okay, so we have waist, which is the thinnest part of the body is the waist here. We have the hips, which is the widest part of the lower half. And that's going to be important to remember because whenever we're fitting or draping, the sort of smallest and widest points are very important as we need to sort of uh, go around them. Um, we'll get more into some of the lower half measurements as we come down here for our horizontal measurements. It's actually probably a better thing to look at. So here we can see them on the person as well as on the figure. And again, we're going to be dealing with all this basically waist down stuff. So this is really interesting to look at so we know exactly where these measurements are going, what they're measuring, and we're not just plugging in numbers without you know knowing exactly what they're representing. So here we have the waist. Uh, up here, and usually the waist is represented one of three ways, just like the hip and the, all these other um, horizontal measurements here. So the waist we will see on our standard measurement chart way at the top, we can see the full measurements. So these are full measurements, and these are basically what everyone is used to doing. So if anybody knows anything about their measurements, you know, the layman, it's typically what their bust waist hip is. And that is a full measurement, which means the full circumference, it goes all the way around the body. So when I look here and look at the, the waist over here, and it's 26 and a half, that is the total complete full waist, um, which is good for reference. But we tend to break up our waists and our hips and our busts into front and back arcs. And now that's a much smaller measurement. So instead of going all the way around the waist like this, we just go from the center front here 
to the side seam here. Now you should be familiar with all these terms. And when I talk about side seam and princess seam and these points, you should be familiar from, from FD20, um, from FD21. You should know that this is the um, uh, you know, center front neck. You should know that this is high point shoulder, low point shoulder, princess seam shoulder. Um, if not, you know, go back, look at this. Um, become acquainted with your points, with your different lines, what they're called, uh, know where your bust point is, uh, know where the bust line is, know where the side seam is, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it's not too hard to remember because a lot of this stuff is labeled very, very obviously. You know, the bust line goes around the bust. The hip line goes around the hip. The waistline goes around the waist. You know, it's not trying to confuse you, and, and uh, indeed, it's trying to be quite um, as obvious as um, possible. And when we get into certain points, we describe them as obviously as we can. So if I were to take this point right here, well, where is it? Well, it's on the side, and it's on the hip line. So it's basically the intersection between the side and the hip. So guess what it's called? That's right, side seam hip. Very good. <laughs> so um, again, it's not meant to be confusing, but you should be uh, rather familiar. Uh, and from this point on, I might sort of um, shortly uh, say these sorts of things and even may um, abbreviate them in your grades. So um, side seam uh, SS, side waist, side waist, you know, all these different things, just be familiar with them. Again, it's not too difficult, and, and um, if you do get confused, you can always refer back to your measurement guide just to be sure of uh, what we're dealing with. Okay, so back to how we're going to break it up. So if we see here, this is our front waist arc. This is our back waist arc. So I said we're going to take these measurements one of three ways. Um, one, of course, is the full, which is all the way around. Um, the second would be just the front arc of the waist, which again is um, uh, center front waist. So this is our center front, this is our waist, this is center front waist intersection. So this point to side waist right here, we go around there, and that's called the front waist arc. And similarly in back, we have a back waist arc. Now it's important to remember because a lot of people might assume that our front waist and back waist are going to be the same. They're not. We're different in the front and back. And, um, you know, the waist is, is fairly similar from front to back, a little bit smaller in back than it is the front, again, depending on how much of a belly you have. Um, and the back hip will dramatically change, um, of course, because we have butts. Uh, butts are nice and round and plump, and so our back hip arc is going to always be, um, you know, substantially larger. Uh, or at least a few inches larger than our front hip arc, which tends to be fairly flat in front. Uh, we also have this measurement here, um, which I think they call the, uh, sometimes it's called the high hip, they call it the abdomen. Um, I feel like abdomen is more like up here, so. I always call it the high hip, and a lot of other people do call it the high hip. Um, but, you know, the book calls it the abdomen, so whatever. Uh, we're not going to use that uh, measurement actually too much in our draft, but we are going to use the hip and the waist pretty um, heavily. Um, so I want you to understand what we're doing. So um, when we're going to create this sloper, like any fashion pattern, we're only going to create half of it. So um, it's a symmetrical piece, right? So our center front and center back is going to be placed on full to represent the fact that uh, we have a symmetrical right and left on our back and a symmetrical right and left on our front. So we're only going to do the left half of our front and the right half of our back. Essentially, it's, it's both the left side because if this was, well, it's the right side of the body, but you know, one side of the body. Um, and so what we're going to do is when we take our measurements, we're going to add up the front and back hip arc to contain the entire front and back because we're basically going to draft it together and, and only at the end are we going to split them apart into the front and back. Um, so when we're doing our first measurements, 
Uh, know that our hip is here, and, and really what's important, when, especially when you're doing the initial measurements or blocking out of a pattern, are our kind of biggest measurements. So when we look at the skirt itself, our biggest lateral measurement is the hip, because of course our butt is the widest part of our basically lower half. So that's our widest part there, and our longest part is all the way from uh, um, here, let's see, do we have it here? No, yeah, but you can imagine. It's from waist all the way down to the ankles. Um, and we do all of that um, because, again, of the nature of our sloper. So what is a sloper? How is it different from a typical pattern? So the term sloper can be used kind of a little bit loosely, but it's used for sort of any standard pattern, uh, a sort of standard template for a pattern. The way we're going to use slopers in this class is that it is a basic pattern. Um, it's not a finished pattern by any means. It doesn't include all of the finishing details that it would need to become a finished garment, but it is a pattern uh, based on a set of measurements, um, and we can use that pattern to manipulate and change and alter uh, to create any number of different patterns uh, that will become finished patterns. So long story short, it's sort of just a basic template. Then we change it, cut it, spread it, slash it, all that good stuff, um, and use that sloper to become finished patterns of any, any kind. Um, we can make flare skirts, we can make mermaid skirts, we can make gourd skirts, we can make, you know, peg skirts, um, all sorts of fun stuff. So we start here with the sloper, and again, the sloper is not intended to become a finished pattern, although with a few, you know, details and finishing touches there, it certainly could be. Uh, but it's not intended as a finished pattern, it's meant to be altered into a finished pattern. Okay, so hopefully that goes over um, what a sloper is, what the measurements we are going to be using are, uh, where they're placed so you have a little bit of a visual representation going on in your head when we plot down uh, these numbers and they're not just sort of random numbers that have no context. Um, and again, if it does feel like that, just, just go over this um, and you know get a little bit more familiar with your points of measurements and some of the standard measurements that we take. Um, again, the ones that we're going to be looking at mostly for this um, is going to be our hips, our lengths, our waists, there's going to be a couple other ones there, so we're going to do dart placement, so I might as well just go over that real quick. So our dart placement is um, a little bit arbitrary, especially on um, the body. So it's supposed to represent on the body basically the midpoint between your center front waist and your side waist. So that point 20 is showing you your dart placement point. Um, on the mannequin, it is where the princess seam comes down, which is generally in the middle of uh, the front waist arc, which again spans from um, center front waist to side uh, waist. Okay, so now that we have this, let's head on over to N119, which is our lab, although you'll never know it, but you are connected to it. Hopefully by now you are connected to it. And I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to close these down. I have them, if we need to pop them back up, I have them on my key, my flash drive, I should say. And let's cross our fingers and hope I can get connected.
So we're here. So let's get started. First, I want to pull up my measurement chart so I have it handy so I can show you what I'm using. So I do have, good, good, my thumb drive is showing up. And I'm going to just, boop, boop, our standard measurement chart so we have it on hand. Okay. Um, so, um, I also remembered that you uh, probably um, are opening up OptiTex and it looks a little bit different than on mine. It might have Ava over here, which is the 3D model. It might have these guys over here. Um, so, sorry I didn't address that, but it kind of just slipped my mind because um, my uh, teacher's computer a lot of times will uh, remember uh, the settings that I do. So um, what I like to do is get rid of these excess windows. We don't need them. A lot of them are for um, functions that we're not going to be using. So um, a lot of that was for, you know, um, very complex uh, pattern layouts, gradings, and things like that. Uh, Ava, we're not going to do if we're not going to do any 3D design. So I get rid of her because I like a nice large work area. Makes it a little bit easier to see. Feels less cramped. Uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So what we're going to do is I want to lay out a basic template to use to create my skirt sloper. So if you're looking at your um, skirt draft uh, directions, um, the first couple um, steps, we have first A to B, which is your skirt length. It says as desired. Since we're going to do this as a sloper, I want the sort of full length that we have um, because, of course, we want that you know, full length to be able to work with. Uh, when we are drafting therefrom, we can always crop it down, cut it off, shorten it, um, but we know exactly how long it should be. So let's um, pick up our measurement chart and see what our full length measurement is. So if we scroll down, we have some of these waist to knee, waist to ankle, waist to floor. Now I want to do waist to ankle, okay? And remember we're doing size eight, which is the second column here. So waist to ankle, we have um, 37 and a half. So I'm going to remember that. Now we also need the full width. Um, so what I want to look at is also, I'm going to jump down um, to, uh, we're going to combine the um, back hip arc and the front hip arc, so basically um, A to D as well as A to H, so our full width, we're just going to combine our full width, so we're going to get, if you see that first um, sort of graphic, it's a basic large rectangle. We're going to create that large rectangle in OptiTex um, to give us a sort of basis to work from, and then we're going to fill in the points from there. So um, although we're following the directions pretty closely on the directions from the book, uh, we're going to do it slightly differently, maybe mix up the steps a little bit. Uh, just because it is a little bit different in OptiTex than working on a paper. Um, and it's just a little bit easier this way. So we're going to create that full rectangle first. And that full rectangle, again, is the full hip depth. I'm sorry, full hip arc, uh, front and back together, as well as the full length. So what I want, um, we know the, of course, the uh, waist to ankle is 37 and a half, that's fine. We don't need to add any ease there. But I also want to take a look at the front hip arcs and, uh, and back hip arcs and add them together. So we have eight and seven eighths plus nine 
and three eighths. So we add those together and we get um, eighteen and two eighths. Pretty sure. I'll double check. Always double check. Um, so eighteen two eighths is also eighteen and a quarter. Now we are going to have to add ease to that. So I'm going to look at the directions and to the back hip arc it says add a half an inch and then it also says to add a half an inch to the front hip arc. So half inch, half inch, uh, half inch on the front, half inch on the back, that's one inch total. So I'm going to change that total from 18 and one quarter, add an inch to 19 and um, one quarter. Okay, so now that we have these two added up plus an inch, as well for our width, as well as this guy for our length, let's go plug it in. But before I do, can you tell what would prevent me from doing it? Can you see? Are you sharp enough yet? Haha, -ha. I need to switch to inches. So I go to Tools, Preferences, and switch from centimeters to inches because of course our standard measurement chart is in inches. I prefer decimals. Um, and I, I'm actually, this will be a good opportunity to show you how to enter in fractions in Optitex. Uh, you can enter in uh, decimal points like this or fractions, um, doesn't matter. I'll just show you how to do it because we just calculated in a fraction. So I'm gonna go to create that rectangle. I'm gonna go to piece new piece, create rectangular piece, okay? I'm gonna name it, well actually I don't need to name it anything because it's gonna be my front and my back, so we'll finish off naming it um, when we're actually done with the pattern piece and have separated the front from the back. The length, I'm gonna type in that waist to ankle measurement, which of course was 37.5, 37 and a half, our width, we calculated to be 19 and a quarter. So to put in a fraction, this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna do the whole number, add a decimal point. Very important that you add a decimal point and then go ahead and do one over four. Okay? All right, so here we are. What I want to do is I wanna work with this upright because I, if you know from previous lessons, I like to work with my grain going upright. So I'm going to rotate it with the rotate piece tool, keyboard shortcut R. Just click on a point, and again, you don't have to be too careful. Um, click on one point to pick it up, click again to drop it down, and um, again, you don't have to be careful because I'm just going to set it at a nice 90 degrees, and let's zoom to fit. Okay, so now what I would like to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and divide my front from my back. So this part over here is going to be my back and this is going to be my front. And so what we're going to do is, oh did I close down the measurements? Oh that's too bad. Let me get it again. Didn't mean to do that. I'm going to look at those um, hip arc measurements again because that's how we're going to divide front from back. So if I look down here, uh, back at my front hip and back hip, I have um, my front is seven, eight, sorry, eight and seven eighths, and then we have nine and three eighths. So from the left coming over is my back. So let's put that in first, but let's also remember that I have to add a half an inch to that. Um, which of course is four eighths, four plus three is seven, so seven eighths, so that would be nine and seven eighths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place a point on contour, or keyboard shortcut O, and this is where the measurement box is gonna start to come in very, very handy. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key to make sure that the measurement box pops, pops up, click, 
and I'm going to type in exactly what I would like. So remember how we move around the figure in a clockwise manner to determine that this is the previous point and this is the next point because of course we're always moving in this direction. You can also tell because this is a lower number than this, which uh, always applies except from first to last. Um, so this is my previous point. This is going to be my center back. This is going to be my center front. This is going to be my side seam in here. I'm determining where that side seam is. And I have the measurement of my back waist arc plus a half an inch, front waist arc sorry, front uh, back hip arc plus a half an inch, uh, back front hip arc plus a half an inch. Sorry. <laughs> I want this to be a graded point, so I'm going to type that in. If you do forget that, remember you can always right click on the point, go to attributes, and toggle it on and off there. So I'm going to do this by an absolute value because I have the measurement. And if you remember, it was 9.7 over and I'm going to hit OK. Now I get to double check if my measurements were correct, if I added those up correctly, because this being 9 and 7 eighths, which is approximately that rounded up, so this should be my front hip arc plus a half an inch, um, which should be um, 9 and three-eighths. Not bad. Uh, so, looks like we did an okay job. Okay, so what I want to do is divide this in half. So what I want to do is put, uh, there's two ways I can do that. I could put a point down here that is the same distance from this side, this edge, the center back, or I could just draft a line straight down a little faster to do that and also we'll have lots of point on contour uh, demonstrations. So let's do this. So basically what it's asking me is I just clicked on that original point that we had and it's saying are you sure this is exactly where you want it? Um, and yeah it is because uh, I clicked right on that point and it will usually snap to a point so fine and I'm going to say okay. And I'm going to bring it down here, and again, I don't have to be so super, you know, careful with it because I'm going to hold down the Alt key as I click on this bottom segment, which will pop up uh, the dialog box. And we have a lot of different options, so let's make sure we understand what they are. So I can measure, so first it's saying where am I measuring it from. So this is from this segment. This is from this segment where I'm coming from, and from point would be from here, okay? Um, as long as I drop down and do last point. Now last point, we've done last point in the basics, so this might be the easiest place to start, but we'll take a look at some of the other ones as well and see what they do. So let's think about this line. What would I do if I was drafting it by hand? I would pretty much just make this point put up an L square or a T square to make sure I get a nice right angle and drop it straight down. So um, what does that mean? That means it doesn't vary left or right, it only goes down. So when I come here, and again, let's, let's remember that I'm measuring from last point, which is the last point that I made, which is this one, from point. There's a lot of different options, so it's easy to get confused and a little bit, you know, um, muddled with these measurement box, but, you know, take it step by step. And always remember to make sure you know where you're measuring it from. Because you can pretty much measure from anywhere. Uh, but if you're measuring from that last point, make sure that's selected and then measure from the from point. So again, I don't want it to move left or right. So I want the left or right or horizontal value to be zero. Okay, this should read 35.7. Remember with that number, that was our total length our waist to angle length, so that's good. And of course we get that nice 90 degree squared angle from the top, so that looks good. Now let's just take a look here. So if we remember down here, oh, place point on segment. Where are we measuring from? Point on segment, that's measuring it down here. So it's now giving us the um, back waist arc plus a half an inch, 
and the front waist arc plus a half an inch ease. Um, so that's our distance here, and of course we could have typed in those numbers as well um, in this little box right here. Um, this, of course, this is from, like I said, this segment up here. This is very simple. Uh, we could have done this here. So a zero angle here um, is, is basically showing a nice straight down um, and, of course, a nice distance of uh, 37 0.5, which of course was our waist to angle. Okay, so all that looks good. So all I have to do is hit OK. And it's asking me now if I want to snap this point on the contour. Sure, why not? That's just going to create a solid link between this point and the outside contour, which I want. Um, so yes, I do. Now that's only one line, it's uh, not going to stop here because I haven't asked it to stop yet, um, but it's good for right now because I just needed this one side seam line to go from top to bottom. So to end this line, I'm going to right click the mouse and hit finish drafting. Boop. Okay. So now we have, again, like I said, the section for our back skirt and our front skirt. Now, I'm going to do one more line before we take a little break and continue this on in the next lesson, and that is to create our hip line, okay? So this is our side seam. So let's, you know, as we're going, let's realize what we're creating. This is our waistline up here because it's the top. The top of the skirt is the waist. Down here is the hem. It's full length, so you can, it's sort of the ankle line, let's say. Um, this is now, since we've separated it from front to back, this is our center back, this is our side seam in the middle, and this is our center front. Now what we want to do is I'm going to put in the hip line. Now the hip line is a cross grain line, and we measure it where it comes by uh, a measurement called the hip depth. So I'm going to pop up our measurement box, and we don't have to add any ease to this. Typically we add ease to our um, horizontal or crosswise measurements um, and not our vertical measurements. So I'm going to look for our hip depth. Now we have a few hip depths. We have a center front, a center back, and a side. Um, it says in our directions uh, to go ahead and use the front hip depth. for um, the, the middle marking. So we're going to go ahead and use the front hip depth, which should be a little bit more than the back hip depth. Let's see. Oh, where were we? Hip depth. Center front. Yeah, it's about Very similar, very similar. So you might say, okay, what is this measurement? Well, basically it's um, from the waistline down to the hip line. So obviously that's how we find out where to place our hip line, is we measure from the waist down. So I'm gonna use um, on our hip depth, oh, well, it says front, so I'll use front. Um, okay, so that's seven and three quarters. Boop, 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 boop. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure down from this line that seven and three quarters. Right? Seven and three quarters, yep. Okay. So I'm just going to place a point on uh, that, this line. Hold down the Alt key to force the measurement box up. And there we go. Now, um, here again, it's a little difficult because it's in an internal detail to tell what is the previous and next. It's a little bit easier because it's so much closer, so I can tell obviously that this number 15 is um, the previous, and this would be the next. So again, I'm measuring from here. Now, if this seems a bit screwy and it's not working out the way you want to, the X or the measurements are not looking correct, Make sure that this point and this point are grading points. Remember, if they're not grading points, if you forgot to hit 
the grading option, when you made the points, it will not be a grading point, and you cannot take measurements from it. Only grading points will allow you to take measurements from that point. So, if it is not a grading point, use your arrow tool to right click, go to attributes, and then um, click on the grading option. And of course, right click on the point that you want to change, open up that drop down menu, and go ahead and change it. Okay, so previous, that's my seven and three quarters, um, which was can be 7.75, or I can do 7.3 over four. Just don't forget that decimal point if you are using um, fractions. Okie dokie, there we are. Now that I have where my um, point is going to cross through, you can go ahead and draft the line across, hold down the Alt key, and again, I'm going to use that same measurement. Um, uh, so here, uh, I can do, it's do segment, place place on segment, so I'm measuring based on this segment, based on my near point and my far point. I don't know why they switch it up sometimes with near point, far point, instead of previous, next. Um, it's a little confusing, to be quite honest. Or we can do it, um, actually let's do it here because this isn't very helpful. Uh, so again, near point, that's pretty close, wasn't I? Do -do -do. Okay, okay, and we can just snap it right there. And um, since I already have this point, I don't have to go through all the measurements because it will snap it to that nice little point there. Um, so I'm going to say okay, and we're going to go across, and one more time just to make sure that I am keeping it straight. Um, our New York point, oh, very close, wasn't I? Um, and of course, you know, from the last point, I should, just to show you, from last point, which would be this one. Um, again, I'm seeing this, which was my front way start. Good, good. You know, uh, it didn't change this way. Good, 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 good. All looking good. And we say, okay. And I'm gonna say, yes, I am snapping these points. Now I'm done. So I right click, finish drafting. Okay, so there we are. We have the basic um, setup for our skirt sloper, um, hip line, side seam, center back, center front, waist, skirt, skirt angle. <laughs> So um, hopefully this was good. Hopefully I'm going nice and slow and you're able to keep up very easily. Um, and in our next video, we're going to go ahead and continue on. So I'll leave you here. Uh, don't forget to save. I didn't save at all, which was um, uh, blasphemy, really. Um, always save as soon as you open up a project. And continue to mash Control S throughout frequently. Uh, which is, of course, your keyboard shortcut for save, and it will definitely help you out. So I'm going to name this Skirt Silver for now. Excellent. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, wait. Sorry, a little, a little premature. All right, bye-bye.